This is Bob Abrahamson. I'm a uh, private first class Army of the United States. I was stationed in Camp Wheeler, Georgia, Fort Meade, Maryland, and then shipped to Camp Don B. Passage in Casablanca. From there to Iran and Algeria, then by ship to Naples, Italy. I was 18. I was an infantry rifleman. Of course, they needed, I was what they call a replacement. I, I joined the 36th Division as a replacement to replace someone who had been killed. So we only had 17 weeks of training here in this country at, at Camp Wheeler. Then they needed warm bodies over there. They shipped us over there. You go where you're told. Footbridge across. Mm -hmm. It was basically partly underwater. So if you made one mistake, and of course you had 40 pounds of equipment on your back, if you made one mistake, you're over the side. It's called torpedo because it was a, a rapid river and you couldn't swim it. We had rubber boats, we had wooden boats, we carried them down too. But by the time we got there, they, we had been shelled so heavily that all the boats had holes in them, they all sunk. There was as many people drowned that day as the was shot, really, or wounded. That's why they call it the Bloody River. That was the worst battle I was in, and it was a no-win no situation. Oh, I was in the uh, Battle of San Angelo and the Battle of San Pietro. Luckily, I didn't get a, any kind of a serious wound, and my two brothers, I had one in the infantry, and one was a combat medic, and they all came back with no injuries. I was in, in the Army 31 months, and 18 of it was uh, as a POW. We were basically attempting a crossing, river crossing that could not be successfully done, was the opinion of most of the generals, except for the head General Mark Clark. He insisted that we try. That was where I was captured. That was the most horrendous battle that I was in. I was in smaller ones, but this was the worst. We lost a thousand men there that day in eight hours captured by the Germans. Yeah, we were walked about five miles into the nearest town and put into a barn for the night. And following day, we shipped by truck into the mountains above Rome to a uh, provisional camp for prisoners of war. I stayed there about three weeks, and we were loaded into boxcars, uh, 60 men to a car and shipped to Stalag 4B in Muhlberg, Germany. I worked on a farm for the first year I was there, and I worked with, with civilians. First, they were afraid of us because all the movies that the German people had seen were movies with cowboys or gangsters. So if anyone came from Chicago, they were automatically a, a gangster. If anyone came from Texas, they were automatically a cowboy. I was there for a year and a half, and as I said before, the first year was spent on a farm, doing all kinds of farm work. I was on a work detail, 10 of us were out in the woods, chopping wood. On January 29th, the Russian army was within about 20 miles of us, so the Germans walked us out, and they burnt the village and all the barns behind it, so the Russians wouldn't get any, any benefit from it. So we walked the northern part of Germany. We were in Pomerania, and we walked to Hamburg, Germany, a distance of 475 miles, as close as we could reckon. The day after we arrived in Hamburg, I was sent to work in a sawmill, and I worked in a sawmill there with civilians until the 8th of May when the war ended and we were liberated. We had to put a stop to Hitler and Tojo. Not the greatest way to end a war, as far as I'm concerned, but if we hadn't, we would probably have lost a million men going into Japan because they were set up to fight to the last person, whether they had a shovel or a rifle. So I think it, it was something that had to be done. Now these college professors are trying to teach that, that the Holocaust didn't happen. Oh. Well, it happened, believe me. I got married and settled down here in Westford. I went to work for the at Fletcher's Quarry, Cut and Stone. I worked there till 1958. Then I, was, I went into the uh, Postal Service as a letter carrier. I think the main thing that cha it changed in me was the fact that I was able to cope with things much better than when I went into the service because of the fact that you had to accept whatever happened to you. You had no control over what happened to you in the prison camp. So you had to just bite the bullet and take whatever happened. Originally, it brought everyone together to win the war. 
And I think that's what the United States was really all about.